Hello, Matt Osborne from MrLike.com. Welcome back. So today I'm going to show you my thoughts on the Leica SL digital camera and a huge thanks to Leica UK and the guys at the Leica Mayfair store. This isn't a sponsored video and the information I share in this video is kind of honest opinion compared to other digital Leica cameras that I own. So first we'll quickly go through some of the details about the Leica SL camera and I'll compare it to my Leica CL digital camera and also my Leica M240 digital camera. As I own both these cameras it gives me kind of a good benchmark as to what I like and what I don't like and if the SL offers me something different. So first of all, let's look at some of the details and then stay with me. And then I'll share some photos from the like SL photo shoots that I did in London from my model shoot with Hannah. Okay, so first things first, let's look at some details. So my current most used camera is the Leica CL digital camera. So what I'll do first, we'll compare the like SL versus Leica CL. So the Leica SL was first announced in 2015 and the Leica CL was not announced until 2017. So the Leica CL is two years newer than the Leica SL. In terms of size and weight, the Leica SL is always said to be a big heavy camera, but that's only really true if you're using like SL lenses on the Leica SL camera. Personally, I'm looking at the Leica SL from using Leica M lenses. So the Leica SL body on its own weighs 847 grams, whereas the Leica CL weighs 403 grams. So this CL body is half the weight of the like SL, which is always nice if you're walking around all day. In terms of size, the like SL is 50% bigger than the Leica CL. So again, it's a bigger size and it's a heavier camera. Both the Leica CL and the Leica SL are roughly 24 megapixels. The main difference being the Leica SL is full frame, whereas the Leica CL has the APS-C crop sensor. Both the Leica SL and CL design have an EVF electronic viewfinder and they both have a three inch LCD touchscreen. Both the like SL and the Leica CL offer autofocus if you use autofocus lenses. So personally I use 99% manual focus lenses on my CL and I would do the same on the SL. So the body does have autofocus but you need to buy the lenses to, to have that function. In terms of battery life because the CL is small the battery is also smaller. So the like SL battery is said to give you around 400 plus photos per charge whereas the Leica CL is said to give you around 200 photos per charge. Now, because I'm shooting manual focus, I think I'll get more than that from both cameras. But just to give you a rough benchmark, the SL should give you roughly twice as many photos per each battery, which is always handy. And then I guess the most important fact, how much do the cameras cost? So I checked the prices online, and at the time I'm making this video, you can pick up a Leica SL from around £1,850 or more, depending on the, the usage and the condition. Whereas they're like a CL you can pick up for £1,500, obviously use price. So you're paying roughly £350 more for a like SL versus like a CL. The like a CL is two years newer, but it's a crop sensor. So if you want that full frame look, you're going to have to pay extra to get the like a SL. Now before I give you my thoughts on the SL, so if you're on the market for a full frame like a camera, other options to the like SL or of course like M cameras such as the Leica M240. The Leica M240 is actually three years older than the Leica SL being first announced in 2012. As with the Leica CL and the Leica SL it is roughly 24 megapixels. They're all slightly different I'm just trying to round it up to make it simpler. 23.7 I think is the exact number. The main difference with Leica M cameras is there is no electronic viewfinder unless you buy a separate clip-on hot shoe EVF. So this camera has an optical rangefinder like the traditional Leica film cameras and because Leica are the only company to make true rangefinder cameras today in 2020 they seem to hold their value much better. You can get a used like M240 body for around £2,400 so that's over £500 more than a used like SL. Both cameras offer you full frame, both cameras offer you roughly 24 megapixels, both cameras have a 3 inch LCD display. Both cameras offer you like a build quality, like a design. One benefit of the like M240 is it weighs 680 grams, so it's lighter than the 847 grams of the SL. So if you want a smaller setup, the like M240 is more narrow and lighter. So that's a very brief kind of camera spec overview, just to give you a benchmark of the like a CL versus like SL versus like M240. Obviously, if you want detailed reviews, there's lots of existing detailed camera reviews on each of these individual cameras online. So I guess one question you may have is, 
if I already own digital Leica cameras, why would I consider the Leica SL? And I guess my honest answer is, since the release of the SL in 2015, not once have I considered the Leica SL. Never, not even slightly, absolutely zero interest. So five years later, what's happened? Even at the start of this year, I still had zero interest in a Leica SL. I've never looked at them, I've never reviewed them, I've never tested them, and I never really planned to test them or wish to test them. For the simple reason, my main interest is film photography, and I already have digital cameras to give me what I thought was what I needed. So I guess you might ask, well, what happened? What changed? So I started to experiment with non-Leica lenses on the Leica CL. These are non-range from the coupled lenses, which I cannot use on the like M camera because unless I had the EVF or shoot via live view, I cannot focus these lenses. So a good example of a lens that I may wish to use on a Leica body is say a Nikon lens. And you're like, why on earth would you put a Nikon lens on a nice Leica camera when you have a reasonably nice collection of very nice Leica lenses already? And again, that is a very good question. I never th thought six months ago or even three months ago I never saw the need to use a Nikon lens on a Leica camera. So let me explain where I'm coming from. If you've watched enough of my videos there's one common theme that runs through every single video. That is pretty women. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Hopefully the pretty women theme runs through many of my videos but that just happens to be while I photograph. If I photograph landscapes you'd have landscapes in every video. Just personally I, I choose to photograph pretty people. So no, it's not pretty people. The common theme in most of my videos, thinking about it and kind of looking back, is almost every video I'm moaning and groaning. Oh, I wish I could get close with this lens. Oh, I wish I could get close with this camera. If you think back to some of the videos I've mentioned, almost every single video, oh, it's a great lens, but I'm all stuck at one meter distance. Oh, I'm all stuck at 0.7 meter distance. You, If you think about it and you've seen enough of my rambling videos, You'd be like, oh yeah, he said it in that video. Oh yeah, he said it in that video. And he said it in that video. I pretty much moan about it constantly. Why? Because I'm a portrait photographer and I want to get closer to my subject to make more intimate looking portrait headshots, that kind of thing. My biggest interest in photographing models is interesting headshots or kind of portrait shots. I love using the eyes and the hair to kind of make hopefully quite interesting portraits. I'm not saying I only photograph tight headshots for every single photo. That's not the case. So if I do want to do tight headshots with say the Leica M240, I could use say the Leica Macro Elmar 90mm lens that we've reviewed. I could use the Leica 90mm f2 Summicron lens which we've reviewed. Perhaps a 75mm f2 Apo. The problem with short telephoto lenses is it compresses the features such as my big nose, which should be useful in this instance. But when I'm photographing pretty people, I don't want to flatten their face. I don't want to use a long 70 to 200 lens like most fashion photographers do to flatten all the features. To me, that's just less interesting. I'm the complete opposite. I want to go in close with like 50 mil lens or wider. And the only way you can do that on a Leica M camera is to use perhaps the Leica Summicron DR or the Leica Elmar 50 mil f2.8, both lenses with close focus goggles which we've already looked at. That's a bit of a faff and a pain because every time you want to go from a tight head shot to then back up to a long shot, as soon as you try and go more than one meter distance, you have to take the close focus goggles off because they, they only work at less than one meter or greater than one meter. So that's always a bit of a pain. So the Leica CL camera is better because of the electronic viewfinder, I can use any lens. So why do I need another camera? Well, my excuse is the Leica CL is a crop sensor body so it will give you 1.5 times crop on any lens you put on. So for example, at the moment I've got the 35 mil and then on this body, the 35 mil Voigtlander in this instance becomes a 50 mil. So all your lenses become longer. And I said in other videos, that is great because it gives you more reach. But then if I want to use a wide lens, I'd prefer to use a 35 mil as a 35 mil to get the 35 mil look. One advantage of using lenses like this Voigtlander, it'll focus down to 0.5 meters if you use a camera with an electronic viewfinder, especially. You can use live view on an M camera, but I'm not one for shooting with live view kind of like this, arm's distance. I don't really do that. So my idea was a Leica body, full frame with electronic viewfinder, and then I can then use lenses like this Voigtlander 35 1.2 at 0.5 meters because it will go, as I say, closer than 0.7, which is the standard close focus of a Leica camera. And then I can hopefully get that kind of tight, intimate headshot look. So the Leica M camera can't give me this kind of distorted, wide angle, tight portrait look. And the Leica CL 
makes wide lenses into normal lenses. So how did I develop an interest or a vision for wide angle portraits? The answer is my Hasblad H2. So with my Hasblad H2 film camera, 645 format, I can use a 50mm lens, which is maybe 30, 31mm equivalent. And I can go in really close to my subject because it's an SLR style camera rather than a rangefinder camera such as the M. So what's basically happened is I'm loving the images coming out of the Hasblad H2. And then I'm like, oh, it'd be so nice if I could replicate that somehow with my Leica cameras. But I can't because I can't get close enough and I can't get close enough with a wide lens. So that's where the idea came from to get the Leica SL. So to summarize that ramble, the reason I organized a test shoot with the Leica SL camera is to get a full frame EVF Leica camera to use any lens on and get close because to recap, I can use any lens because it has an electronic viewfinder. So I'm not limited to only Leica M lenses. Why is it important not to be limited to only Leica M lenses? Because Leica lenses are designed to be used from 0.7 meters to infinity. So for this type of photography, if I move away from M lenses and look at perhaps some of the Voigtlander lenses, which will focus at 0.5 meters, or even as I say, Nikon lenses, which or SLR lenses, which will focus maybe as close as 0.35 meters. All of those lenses can be used on the Leica SL system and obviously the Leica CL system, but the Leica CL will, will, as I say, change the focal length. So that was my reasoning to test out the Leica SL. So I wanted to see, is it as heavy as everyone says it is? Will it give me that kind of look that I'm really kind of going for to replicate the images I'm getting out of my medium format Hasbad H2 and that being wide angle lens portrait photos. So as I say, the amazing guys at the Leica Mayfair store in London and Leica UK marketing team, they kindly lent me a Leica SL camera for a model photo shoot organized a model through one of the London model agencies. I'll put the details below. So I had a new camera, new model, and roughly two hours to see what I could get from the camera. So what I'll share with you now is a series of images shot with the Leica SL camera. And 99% of the photos are shot with the version two Voigtlander 35mm f1.2 lens, a spherical. As I say, because I already have the Leica SL, the Leica SL is an L mount body, the same as the Leica CL. So I just used my Leica L mount to Leica M lens adapter. Basically took this whole unit off the Leica CL and dropped it straight into the Leica SL. And that was kind of my setup. I did a few photos of the Nikon lens and I did a few photos of I think with the vintage Nikkor lens. But the majority is shot with the Voigtlander 35 1.2 at 1.2. So if they look super shallow depth of field, that's because I'm in close number one and I'm shooting the lens wide open number two. So the depth of field in the images is kind of paper thin and it's very easy to miss focus. So in a second, I'll show you a series of images shot with Hannah. Now what most good YouTubers would do is they'd borrow a camera, they'd then spend the day going around a photogenic city, taking loads of RTB roll, me holding the camera, me walking around with the camera, me doing some cool kind of looking, shooting the model and all that jazz. I'm still a photographer at heart, not a YouTuber. And I'm also pretty simple in terms of, I'm very black and white. If I do something, I'm all in 100%, blinkers on, take photos. And I don't think about anything else. I'm literally just, tr -tr -tr -tr. all I'm trying to do within a two hour block, time block, often as the case is model photography, is to get the best results I can possibly get from that individual within a two hour window. I didn't want to think about B-roll. I didn't want to stop to think that I had six, I think it was six film cameras in my camera bag, ready to do some kind of film portraits with the same model. I was so focused on just using the Leica CL and enjoying the experience, I must add, that I'm afraid there's no RT B-roll or not even really bad quality B-roll. The only thing I managed to do was to take some photos of the cameras next to my existing cameras while I had them with me in the Leica store, which is what you've seen through this video so far. So apologies, I can only show you photos, but I'm sure you can imagine what I look like holding a camera. It's kind of like this, and that's probably oily mess from the B-roll. So here are photos from my shoot with Hannah to give you some information to recap. All of these photos are shot with the like SL camera in raw mode. All photos are processed through Lightroom and I applied a preset to all photos, which I've now saved as my like SL preset. I think all photos were shot with the lens wide open at f1.2, 
which of course isn't the which of course isn't the lens at its sharpest and it will give you very shallow depth of field slash soft images if you're not careful i had the like sl setters full manual mode because that's how i shoot all photos are shot at iso 200 all photos are captured with available light only kind of no flash photography and i use daylight white balance and then the monochrome film look to give me a black and white preview because i prefer to see in black and white when i'm making my images so there's some example photos shot with the like sl i hope you enjoy them and i hope it gave you a taste of what the like sl can do despite it being kind of a five-year-old digital like a camera now despite me having my kind of blinkers on and just trying to be focused on the photos i did try really hard to stop a couple of points through the shoot and swap cameras to give you some example images shot with different cameras. So first I'll share a few sample images shot with the Leica CL and the same Voigtlander 35 1.2 lens, just to give you an idea of the crop center look versus full frame look. So these are shot with the Leica CL. Everything else is the same, ISO 200, shot in raw, processed through Lightroom with the same preset as I used on the Leica SL, just for kind of comparability. And for completeness, here are some images shot for the like M240. Again, ISO 200 manual mode with the Voigtlander 35mm f1.2 lens. The main difference being the Leica M240, I could only focus as close as 0.7 meters, whereas the Leica CL and the Leica SL, I was using the same lens at 0.5 meters. So that was the only real difference between the three cameras. So after using the three cameras roughly side by side on the same photo shoot, albeit not at the same time, so sorry for the non-scientific example photos same model same locations same lighting but not exactly side by side comparison so during the photo shoot i was using the like sl camera from kind of a cold start so straight away i started shooting the model with the sl like a new to me camera one thing i don't like about electronic viewfinders is the blackout between each photo that really kind of unnerves me a bit because i'm so used to having constant sight of my subject most of the time a model by looking through a optical viewfinder because this is just a basic window straight through the camera. I never lose sight of my model. So if they do something between two photos, I can capture that as well. One thing that I didn't like about the like SL is the blackout between images because I tell it to pose and then it go black and then I'm like, I wonder what she's doing. And then I'm kind of panicking. Maybe I'm missing a, a nice mid pose because some models will just be like change 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 and they'll change and it'll be blacked out so i can't actually see what they're doing so i don't like that about electronic viewfinder cameras but what it does offer is it lets me get closer than 0.7 meters with any lens i really only scratch the surface by using more or less one lens for the whole day to, to try and make it simple but it did allow me to get some of perhaps my favorite images i've ever shot with the 35 mil 1.2 lens because i was able to get that bit closer in terms of image quality, I'd say the Leica SL is on a par to the Leica M240 and Leica CL in kind of non-pixel people terms. You can decide yourself. I showed you photos from all three cameras, so... So drop me a message in the comments if you prefer the photos from the SL, the CL or the M240. I guess if it was me, try not to compare the photos in terms of the pose or the face or how pretty the model is. Try to look at it in terms of image quality rendering that kind of thing because dynamic range because obviously the model can do anything in any photo it's the rendering and the look from the camera that's important considering i was using the same lens for all three cameras for most of the photos there were some glasses photos from the sl shot with the 28 mil nickel which i really liked other than that most of them were shot with 35 mil in terms of weight yes the sl is heavier than the M240 and yes by the end of the day my scrawny wrist was starting to feel like it had some wear but I get a similar feeling if I'm using a big lens on the like M240 for example. The 35 1.2 is a heavy lens for an M mount lens and I have lots of smaller lighter options making my SL setup lighter. Battery life was really good, menus seemed pretty straightforward. I didn't kind of dig into them too much because I was interested in using the camera from a usability point of view in terms of taking the pictures i can learn to work with menus that's not my priority when buying a camera the main thing i was interested in was image quality using the lens as i wanted to use it and also the evf and how easy it would be to manually focus lenses so the like sl has a joystick on the back of the camera i was pressing the joystick once with my eye to the evf 
Pressing the joystick magnifies the image. I'd critically focus, half press the shutter. That then backs off the magnification to kind of a normal view. I compose the shot, take my photo. Because of the crazy shallow depth of field, every single photo, press the joystick, zoom into the closest eye, critically focus it, take the photo. Next photo, zoom in, closest eye, take the photo. That's how I shoot photos, obviously. Everyone's different, but that, that was kind of my workflow with the like SL. And other than the blackout of the EVF, I enjoyed the camera. In terms of speed of use, I found the like M camera much faster to use, which might be interesting to some people because the M240 gives me constant view of the subject through the optical viewfinder. I could take photos much faster because I didn't have to zoom in on every photo and I didn't have to wait for the EVF blackout to clear after each photo. I must point out, I'm not saying the blackout of the EVF is bad or different to maybe many other mirrorless cameras. I'm just comparing it to an M camera. M cameras are much better for constant sight of your subject. The like M camera is just better for faster focusing and faster image taking for me personally, using manual focus on the Leica SL. So there is still a lot going for the Leica M system. So after testing the Leica SL, was I impressed enough to buy it? My answer is not yet. I would be buying the like SL for a very niche reason, and that being to use the full frame sensor with non range finder coupled lenses closer than 0.7 meters. That's the only reason I would be looking to get this camera. For everything else, I can use the like M240 for full frame, and I can use the like a CL if I'm happy with the crop sensor look. So that's my first impressions, first look review of the like SL camera. Thanks again to Like UK for the opportunity to test the like SL and I hope you enjoyed the sample photos I was able to capture. Now if you're not yet subscribed to the channel today may be a good opportunity to do so. I say that because today's like SL review is the first of a series of digital like a camera reviews new to this channel that I've not yet basically talked about. I did test a second like a digital camera after the Leica SL. So if you hit subscribe and turn on your notifications, you'll be notified when the next digital Leica camera review comes out, which will be the video following this video. It'll be a very similar format with new to me digital Leica camera and example photos from a model shoot. So that's it for the Leica SL. Please hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and drop me a message below if you think the Leica SL allowed me to up my game in terms of making nice portraits. Do you think the Leica SL portraits shared in today's video were better than images I've shared before from the Leica CL or Leica M240? I'd love to hear your thoughts and maybe you didn't even notice any difference between the SL, the CL and the M240. That's it for today. Next video coming soon. Thanks for watching.